Hi Catsters, it's Dr. Karen here. One of the most important parts of looking after our cats is being able to recognise and interpret their body language, making sure that we respect what they're trying to tell us and avoid causing them any undue discomfort or distress. Another important part of looking after our cats is making sure that they stay fit and healthy and sometimes that does involve doing things that they're not going to be very happy about. And it's important to know how to do those safely for both you and your cat. One of the reasons that cats will struggle and fight against a lot of these things is if they sense that you're nervous or anxious about it. If you're not confident that you can restrain them properly, they're not going to be confident either. If you pick up your cat, but they feel that you might drop them, they're going to want to get away from you. But if you can restrain your cat in a way that is firm, but friendly, without using force or fear, you are going to have a much better chance of success. So over the next few weeks, I am going to show you some tips and techniques for doing things like clipping claws, bathing your cat, cleaning ears, giving medications, um, with clipping claws kind of being one of our most important ones because if you've got shorter claws, you're less likely to have any damage if they do lash out. Another really important factor is recognising when you are beaten. Nothing is worth sustaining an injury and nothing is worth causing your cat serious stress and certainly not any pain. I have found that in the majority of cases, if you are confident and firm in your approach, you can successfully perform a huge number of tasks that they don't like with very minimal distress. But if you've got a cat that is seriously panicking, that is wanting to lash out, then the safest thing is to abandon that. And if it's something that needs to be done, then talk to your vet about alternative ways of doing that. So I'm going to start today with some basics, which is simply picking up and holding your cat, which might sound a little bit silly to do a demonstration on, but I'm not talking about just picking up your cat for a cuddle. It's about approaching them, knowing you're about to do something that they're not going to be all that happy with, but being able to anticipate the ways in which they might try to get away from it. So you need to be starting with the assumption they're going to try to get away, but you need to be confident that you will be able to restrain them appropriately. And that means being firm, but making them feel like they are comforted and that they are safe. You should never be gripping skin. You shouldn't be holding onto legs. You should be holding onto bodies. You can be using support around the shoulders, hips, joints to stop them from being able to flail out and scratch. But you shouldn't be holding them in such a way that causes them any risk of injury. So I'm going to use a few of my cats to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Mostly I'm going to use Cyril because he generally doesn't care what you do to him so long as there's a treat at the end. So he's going to be the best one for me to show you some techniques without causing any kind of stress. But I will also show you how to approach a cat that is telling you I'm not keen. So this is Cyril. And for those of you who have met him before, you will know that he is one of the most laid back cats that you can ever hope to meet. And at the moment he is engaging in his favorite thing to do when he's awake, which is of course eating. So he has kindly volunteered to help me demonstrate a few ways to pick up and restrain your cat. So if I was just going to be picking up Cyril to give him a cuddle, it would look something like this. Oh, come here, you big cuddly monkey. 
but let's say I'm in a situation where I need to restrain him. Perhaps I'm at the vet and he needs an injection or he's got something stuck in his fur and I need somebody to get that out. Anything that you need him to be safely restrained, I'm going to need a bit of a different approach. So I need him to be able to be restrained firmly, safely, and in a way that he's not able to struggle a great deal, but also in a way that he feels calm and confident that I've got him. What I'm aiming to do here is to get one hand coming under his tummy and around underneath his chest. I'm then going to hold on to his the, the front leg that is closest to my body and I'm going to hold on to the elbow. That's going to mean that I can firmly keep that leg pushed against my body and gripping the elbow means that he's not going to be able to flail about. I'm going to get Cyril to come over here. Because I'm right-handed, I'm going to get him to face with his head toward the left. I'm going to bring that right hand underneath his tummy under his chest and you can see I'm gripping that leg around the shoulder and I'm pulling that against my body. I've got my thumb sort of coming around the side, the side of his chest and that has him pinned sort of with my elbow. That gives my left hand to come around the front. I can hold on to the other elbow if I need to. I can give him a really reassuring stroke. I can come around over the top with my elbow and keep his head from being able to spin around like this. And as I said, in an absolute worst case scenario, if he was going to escape or injure anybody or himself, I can grab onto that skin over the scruff there. So if you have a cat that you think is likely to be in that situation, then one of the safest things you can do is stroke them around that area. It's a soothing thing for them to receive. You can tickle around the ears, but it also means that in a lightning flash, you can get a hold if you need to safely. And if you're in a situation where he might try to turn and bite and scratch, what you would then need to do is to hold that scruff, lower him back down to the floor or to the table and step away. But never ever use the scruff to pick up your cat. Never use a scruff hold as a form of punishment and never use it just as a convenient handhold. So what if I'm dealing with a cat that isn't quite as agreeable as Cyril? If I've got a cat that is perhaps hiding away cowering away, showing me that they are not happy to be picked up at all. Well, the steps are very, very similar and the end result is basically the same. It's just about how to approach that situation without getting injured. I'm going to approach her calmly, being aware that I need to be able to pull her securely toward me and stand up sort of in one movement. It needs to be smooth. It needs to be controlled. She needs to feel that right immediately she is safe with me. So giving her a little bit of a tickle. I'm coming around underneath, grabbing that elbow again, pulling her to me. And then I've got her in that same hold that I had with Cyril early on, earlier on, which is holding the elbow underneath. She likes to grip. And uh, I've still got that free hand that I can scoop her bottom. I can stroke her head. I can put pressure over the top of her head if need be. And if I can get her to let go of my shirt, I can also come around over the top if I need to restrain that leg and her head. I will go into more specific details with each of the different activities that I will be showing you over the coming weeks, uh, but just as some basic guidelines to follow when you are restraining a cat to do 
something like a nail clip or an ear check or any of those things. I've got Cyril here as my little demo cat again and I'm just going to show you a few holds that you can be using that will keep you both safe. Um, step one, if you're doing anything on sort of a countertop or a table or any kind of potentially slippery surface, is to lay down a towel, preferably even like a, a non-slip sort of bath mat, because if they feel like they've got a bit more purchase on the surface, they're immediately going to feel a lot more settled and more calm. If their feet are slipping out from underneath them, they're going to panic. Um, I'm not sure if panic is really in Cyril's wheelhouse, but uh, <laughs> he does make the, uh, the perfect model for this type of thing. Some basic ways that you can hold and restrain your cat safely, similar to the way that I had Cyril when I was holding him after I picked him up, well, arm coming sort of around back, so I've got my elbow stopping his bottom from sliding any further back. I'm going to bring that hand up so that it's gripping the front leg. Now, another technique you can use is to hold both front legs in one hand. Just make sure you put a finger between them so you're not squashing them together because they don't love that particular hold, as you can see with Cyril there. So ideally, if you can just hold onto that front leg and if you hold it, around the shoulder but also getting the back of your, your your hand kind of behind that elbow because that way even if he tries to move it he can't move it very far so if you've got that front leg the other leg is sort of pushed in against you again you've got a free hand so you might be using that to secure his head down against your body so that's one of the ways that we can hold him and keep him nice and still other ways that you can sort of secure them is if you've got him flat against the tabletop there, getting your hands so you've got thumbs over the neck, you've got fingers coming around, so I'm sort of tucking the elbows and shoulder against the body, and that sort of stops him from being able to really swing around, but it also gives me, I can use my body to keep him in position. If you're doing something like a nail clip or something with a leg, the aim is to control a joint. If he can get that elbow free, he's gonna keep trying to get it free. If you can keep a hand at the crook of the elbow there, that stops him from being away, able to pull that paw away. So the big thing when it comes to safely restraining a cat, both for them and for you, is not gripping skin, not grabbing a limb. What you need to be doing is bringing as much of their body into yours or supported by the table. You never want to force them onto a surface, pushing them into the ground, but using that surface just to secure them is another way to make them feel secure. Putting pressure at the neck, never around the neck. So just at the sides, never against the throat, never coming underneath there, because a panicked cat can easily cut off its air supply. But if you've got pressure either side of the neck or just coming over the neck, that means if he decides he wanted to he wants to swing around, you've got control over his head, see? And Cyril has had enough now. I know, baby. And most important of all is to reward them at the end. Now you might be thinking, thought about the classic cat burrito, the towel wrap. Um, personally, I'm not actually a huge fan of that, uh, that particular method of restraint. For one, you're fairly limited with what you can actually do with that particular hold. Um, once everything's wrapped up, you can't access a lot. 
And the other reason I'm not a huge fan is that I find that that sort of restraint tends to make a cat panic and fight more. Obviously, each individual is a little bit different. Each situation is a little bit different. And sometimes that type of restraint may be needed. What you'll need to do, and if your aim is to obviously keep our clawed feet covered, is you need to get a decent sized towel to begin with. You wanna be able to fold the towel up so it's covering the front legs. I've got a good grip around the back here that allows me to then wrap one side around. I can then wrap that other side around. Importantly, you have to have held that tight, tight grip around the back there. So you've now got a cat who is contained. Feet are in that wrap. That is the key to getting this wrap right. And because we've got a nice big towel, and yet we've still got a little escapee, which is great if you wanted to do a nail trim. Um, but as you can see, he is really resenting that. When I find in most situations, I can get a lot more success with less restraint. Um, the less you're holding a cat down, the better. And I can do a lot more with just this hold, with just holding the shoulders, with just controlling the neck, or by holding him close to my body than I can with him wrapped in a towel.